Last week, I was sharing with you about Corey Ten Boom, uh, who is the author of The Hiding Place. She's not with us anymore. Uh, that book came out in the 80s. And like I said last week, this is a classic Christian book. It's a life changer and will teach you so much, especially about dealing with pain and suffering. Uh, and so if you remember the circumstances, she and her sister were captured by the Nazis, put into a concentration camp. And essentially, she was lowered into the pit of hell, she and her sister. Uh, but the lessons she learned learned in that extreme environment are just spiritually life-changing and you just need to look at them and study them. So her entry into the concentration camp, as you can imagine, was an extreme shock. It was a horribly dark place. People are being put to death. They're dying from starvation, exhaustion, etc. They are in barracks that are extremely overcrowded. So think about this. How could this be a blessing? Well, what she found was, you know, she wandered into those barracks and she and her sister and they sat down and immediately she was attacked by fleas. It was like no mistaking what was going on. And she jumped up and she was like, how are we ever going to handle this? Uh, and, and so her sister Bessie is, we're going to get through it. We trust the Lord. Well, what the result of all those fleas, the disease, the overcrowding, that meant that the guards never came into the barracks. They didn't want to be covered in fleas. They didn't want to be exposed to the disease, etc. So if the guards are outside, if they never come in, what happens? That means the overcrowding, first of all, meant that there were tons of people to reach with the gospel. And it also meant with, with the hardship they were experiencing, that they were so spiritually vulnerable, the ladies around them, and that they could, because of the absence of the guards, they could minister to those ladies. They could have Bible studies and prayer as much as they wanted. What seemed like a curse and was a curse also was a blessing. The other thing Corey said was this. She said, look, the darker that place became, the more the word of God stood out, the more it shined and the more they shined in the darkness. They were the light. God's word was the light and it drew people like crazy. So if you had to sum that up, if you had to sum up all that, I'd say it's this, that often in life, what seems like a burden is actually a blessing. You know, when Corey was a young child, there was, she had a conversation with her father. This thing kind of stuck with her for the rest of her life. But her father explained to her that there were just some burdens for her that were too heavy to carry. She couldn't do it. And he said, Corey, I will carry those for you. And that lesson really came alive in the prison camp because this was a burden that was way too heavy to carry. And so she had to rely on the Father. And, and this is my design in our lives, okay? So we are often running into things that are way too heavy for us to carry. And, and, and yet you think as a man or as a Westerner, what are we supposed to do? We, we pull ourselves up by our bootstraps, self-reliance, strength, let's go. And that doesn't work in the kingdom. Oftentimes, all these things are designed to get us to the end of ourselves. And so we must be comfortable with crying out. We must be comfortable with saying, I can't do it. I can't do it. God, I have to have your help. And actually, that crying out acts like a magnet. It draws the Father when you do that. So don't be afraid. Cry out to the Father and say, I need help. You know, one thing that Bessie was always modeling and, and teaching to Corey was that our predicament is often our calling. So our hardship, that's often your calling. The circumstances that you are put into that oftentimes you don't wanna be in, that is the place God has put you in and it's often there by an assignment. That doesn't mean that the Lord doesn't love you. You know, Corey often used the great example of being on a train and going into a long, dark tunnel. And she said, look, if you're on the train and you're in the long, dark tunnel, it doesn't mean everything has, has fallen apart in your life. You trust the engineer to take you out of that tunnel and back into the light. And of course, the parallel is with our father. We trust the engineer. We trust the one driving the train that he will, when he's ready, take us out of the dark. So the natural outworking of that idea is that we have to think about our predicament. And it really has to start with prayer. And so we ask the Father, we say, is this an assignment? Because if it's an assignment, what we have to do then is to accept it. And not only accept it, that I always say we reach out, we close the prison door. It feels like a prison, but until we accept that, we say, Lord, I will be in this cell as long as you want. If this is your assignment, that's what I'll do. And, and honestly, what you'll find that usually when you do that, your lesson is over. And that's when the prison door springs open. I think the last lesson I walk away from, the hiding place from, from Corey Ten Boom, is this, that pain is our preparation. Pain is your preparation. It's a training that we have to go through to get to a life that we could never imagine. 
God is trying to take you to a place that you can't get to without the predicament, without the pain. And so we accept, we say, Lord, is this an assignment? And we accept it. And we know that we will come out of the tunnel when it's his time. And he's trying to take us to a place that we could never get to without the predicament, without the pain. So you pray about that and God bless you. By the way, thank you for caring about your persecuted brother and sister.